Blanche Devereaux's going on a diet. <laughs> Could you hold off until tomorrow? I got some Sara Lee sack I'd like to unload. <laughs> Wait, can I have those gummy bears? They are good, aren't they? Oh, I don't eat them. Then why do you want them? To play army. <laughs> And sometimes I like to line them up around my bed and pretend I'm Gulliver. <laughs> you know, Blanche, you put yourself through this hell every year. Are you sure it's worth it? Of course it's worth it. On my anniversary, every year since I was married, I have slipped into my wedding dress and had my picture taken. George was always so proud of me for staying svelte. And I'm going to get into that dress this year, even if it kills me. It's not you I'm worried about. The last time you went on a diet, you turned into that guy from Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> You did everything but butter my face. <laughs> it's going to be different this time. See, I'm on this drink-it-off diet. You have two shakes and a sensible meal every day. You lose weight the fast, easy way. I prefer the Italian diet. You drink a bottle of wine, make a smart remark, then get your jaw wired. <laughs> oh, Dorothy, a man called for you while you were out. Finally, now we can break out that bottle of champagne we've been saving. Uh, Come on, Dorothy, we might not get another chance. <laughs> Sure we will. We can just serve it at the wake. <laughs> he says he's in Miami on business and he wants to see you. Uh, John Reddy called. I haven't heard from him in almost 40 years. Oh, I can't believe this. Who's John Reddy? Oh, he's a guy who humiliated me. Could you narrow it down a bit, Dorothy? <laughs> was the guy who stood me up for my senior prom. Oh, Dorothy, I had no idea you were stood up for your prom. Oh, that's awful. I figured you didn't go, but to be stood up. Oh, John Noretti was one of the toughest guys in my high school. He smoked, he drank, he made those rude noises under his armpit. I was totally in love with him. Uh, and when he asked me to go to the senior prom, I was thrilled. Oh, when I came down the stairs all dressed, Ma cried because her little girl was all grown up. And she remarked that that night would always be the most memorable and important night that the two of us ever shared. Remember, Ma? Vaguely. <laughs> but John never showed up. I've never forgotten it. <laughs> but apparently he has, or he wouldn't have had the nerve to call here. You're not going to call him back, are you? No, absolutely. If John comes to Miami, I want to see him. I don't think that's such a good idea, Pussycat. Ma, don't you see? When John Noretti gets here, I'm finally going to get my revenge. He's going to see a beautiful, vibrant woman who's done something with her life. Well, Dorothy, I'd like to help, but... <laughs> I can't go out with him on such short notice. I meant done something with her life standing up. <laughs> I'm talking about me. Oh, my revenge will be to make John feel as bad as he made me feel. I want him to see me, see my life, so he'll know exactly what he missed. She doesn't know a whole lot about revenge, does she? <laughs> well, I'm ready for John. Oh, I've waited a long time for this night. Dorothy, I'm begging you, don't go out with this guy. He hurt you once, he'll hurt you again. I am not going out with him. But you said you were going to make him suffer. Don't you have to date a man to do that? Not this time. No, I have my plan all worked out step by step. First, he'll comment on how stunning I look, and then I'll say, oh, John, did we have a date tonight? Oh, I completely forgot. And as he crumbles, I will show him the door. What if he doesn't comment on how stunning you look? Then you'll bring it up. Time for my shake. Honey, how are you doing with this diet? Oh, no problem. Piece of cake. Nice big piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> Devil's food. Smothered in whipped cream and coconut flakes and a lobster. Blanche. <laughs> oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, a wonderful strawberry shake. <laughs> strawberry, mmm. I bet that go great with a burger. <laughs> well, you're being a little insensitive, aren't you? A little. Who wants an eclair? Oh, God, that's John. Oh, I just hope I can be mean enough. Dorothy, do that thing you do to me in the morning when I try to take a piece of bacon off your plate. Blanche, I want to tell you something. I've never weighed more than 100 pounds on any day of my adult life. And because you're my friend, I want you to sit down and I'll share with you that secret. Oh, tell me, Sophia. I was born that way. I could eat anything and never get fat. Anyone ever tell you look like George Kirby? No, no. 
wait, wait. It's time that John already learned a lesson, that I am not that same little girl whose head can be turned by a, a pair of beautiful eyes and a killer smile. Now. Dorothy. Dorothy, look at you. You're as beautiful now as you were then. How have you been? I love you. <laughs> I, uh, I'd love you to meet my uh, friend, uh, Rose. Oh, hi, John and Shall we go? We've got reservations at 8.30. Take me. <laughs> out. Take me out for dinner. <laughs> Dorothy. <laughs> I thought you were going to make him suffer. Oh, and I will. Tomorrow morning, I'll tell him he's the worst lover I ever had. <laughs> I hope you like medieval food. I love it. I'm just glad I didn't have it for lunch. <laughs> Good evening, my lord. Good evening, my lady. I'm done. I will be your fool for the entire evening. <laughs> Would you like to know about our specials? We have pheasant and we have wild boar. How is the pheasant? Do you like chicken? <laughs> yes. It's chicken. Why don't you bring us a couple of grogs while we think about it? Diet grog, if you have it. <laughs> Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship. It's so strange sitting here with you, and you're so different. Why? Well, I remember you as that tough kid in the leather jacket. Fights, vandalism. You were really a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> but that's all behind you. Tell me, what do you do now? I manufacture spray paint. <laughs> At least all that training didn't go to waste. If not for the courage of that fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be lost. It's wonderful seeing you again. I'd forgotten how charming, how vivacious, how, how lovely. Two nights and a rabbi walked into a bar. And the first way... Say, I, I was... You were saying... Well, I was about to say I'm going to be in town for a few more days. Could we get together Friday night? Oh, I can't on Friday. The high school where I teach is having its senior prom that night. I promised I'd chaperone. Can you bring a date? Oh, you can't be serious. I'll buy you a corsage. Make it orchid. <laughs> and just make sure you show up this time. What do you mean? Well, you didn't show up at our last prom. Not that I ever think of it. What are you talking about? I showed up. What? <laughs> Your mother sent me away. She what? She said I was dressed like a bum and slammed the door in my face. She what? The millionaire and his wife. Something wrong? Oh, no, no, not at all. But I'll tell you, on the way out, I would like to stop at the gift shop. I'm going to be needing one of those spike balls on a chain. <laughs> Dorothy. Bye, Dorothy. Ma, come back. I want to sit and have a little talk. Why? Oh, come on now. Would it hurt to spend a little time with your daughter? That remains to be seen. Uh, Rose, would you excuse us just for a minute? Sure. I know that tone of voice. <laughs> Somebody's gone again. Ma, I'm going to ask you a question, and however you answer, I'll believe you. Did you tell John Noretti to go away the night of my senior prom because you didn't like the way he was dressed? Well... Liar! <laughs> you knew John showed up that night and you didn't tell me and you didn't want me to go out with him tonight because you knew he'd bring it up. I can explain. Just don't walk me away in another ill-equipped nursing home. <laughs> I promise nothing. It's true. I did send him away that night because he was dressed like a hood. And then he started to mouth off to me. So I told him to leave and not to come back until he was wearing a decent jacket and a tie. Yeah, but why didn't you tell me? I thought he'd come back, and when he didn't, well, I was afraid if you knew the truth, you'd never forgive me. It's water under the bridge. What's the big deal? Stanley's born, Akma. That's the big deal. <laughs> when John didn't show up that night, I lost all my self-esteem. And when Stan asked me out two weeks later, I said yes, because I didn't think I could do any better. And that's why I went to that drive-in movie with Stan, and that's why I got pregnant. And that's why I got married. So what are you saying? If it wasn't for me, you would have married John already? I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe I would have met somebody else, somebody wonderful. But I'll never know because of you. You took away my choices. How can I ever forgive you for that?
Time for today's sensible meal. Where's my tuna quiche? You heard me. I said, where's my tuna quiche? I get five ounces of solid food a day and I want my tuna quiche. You mean that little pie? Little pie. Little pie? I wanted a snack. A snack? I thought it was a little fishy. Oh, you ain't my sensible meal. You ain't my sensible meal. Crunch, stop crunch. You're out of control. Oh, my God. Oh, Rose, honey, I'm sorry. Oh, what did I just do? Yes. <laughs> Honey, we know dieting is hard. We've all been there. Remember the time Stan and I went on that weight loss through sex diet? The idea being every time you felt hungry, you would substitute food with some sexual activity. Did it work? I gained 18 pounds. <laughs> well, fine. I won't have my sensible meal. Tomorrow's my anniversary anyway. I'll just have my last shake tonight. <laughs> Where's my shake? You heard me. I said, where's my shake? I needed something to wash down the little pie. <laughs> it was so fishy. I don't believe you. Well, if it's any consolation, I'm still hungry. <laughs> oh, shut up. Just shut up, you babbling, bubble-headed, bleach blonde. Baboon. Baboon. <laughs> She needed a beat. John! Oh, I'll go get Dorothy. Won't you have a seat? Mrs. Petrillo! It's John Reddy. Well, you haven't aged a bit. I said you haven't aged a bit. I hear you. I'm not deaf. Haven't staged a hit? Oh, John, I'm sorry I kept you waiting. Dorothy. You remember my lying, vicious toad of a mother? Is there a problem? Oh, not at all. Happy as ever at Happiness House. <laughs> oh, well, I guess we should be going. Oh, now before I get a picture. Oh, Rose. Oh, come on, Dorothy. It's your prom picture. Uh. <laughs> Say cheese. Cheese. Now smile. <laughs> We'll save a lot of time if you just do it. <laughs> Have a good time. Thank you. I never got to go to the junior prom in St. Olaf. How come? It was just for people named Junior. <laughs> it fits. My wedding dress fits. Congratulations. You weren't married in a white dress? Oh, Rose, come on. I mean, it's one thing to hear snickering when you walk down the aisle, but me and White, even I couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> okay, Rose, come on, take the picture. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Blanche. I never thought you'd fit into that thing. Well, all the pain and torture were worth it. George would be so proud of me. My body's just as light and taut as the day we were wed. Blanche! <laughs> Nothing. It was an enchanting evening. Enchanted evening. That was the theme of that prom that we never got to. <laughs> a little more romantic than the theme they had tonight. Uh, wear a condom is more than a prom thing. <laughs> it's sort of become the school slogan. It's catchy. <laughs> oh, I wish Stan had gone to that high school. You know, I, I've got a little confession to make. One of the reasons I wanted to see you again was to, well, show you how well I turned out. Well, I wanted to show you how well I turned out. I mean, I was a mess in high school. We all were. Yeah. Except for what was her name? Roseanne de Rosmo. No, oh, she had it all together. I wonder what ever happened to her. She turned into a bitter, lonely lady. Came to a lot of money. <laughs> At least that's how she was after our divorce. <laughs> I had a wonderful time tonight. So did I. I'm just sorry I messed up in high school. Well, it wasn't your fault. That was my mother's. Actually, I've always wanted to thank you, Mother, for that night. Why? For not letting me take you out. She took one look at my clothes and my attitude, and she said it wasn't good enough for her daughter. Her little girl deserved better. She actually said that? Yeah. And a whole lot of Italian words. <laughs> I'm not too sure if it was a curse, but I did talk like a girl for about three weeks. <laughs> 
was a turning point in my life. It's when I finally started growing up. You mean, and all that happened because of my mother? I like to think so. I'll tell you another thing I remember about that night. How nervous I was. Nervous? About what? <laughs> Our goodnight kiss. I was terrified. I figured, oh, she's not going to want me to kiss her goodnight. She'll... It was worth waiting for. Can I call you next time I get back to town? I'd like that. Good night. Don't take me, Jeff. Don't take me. <laughs> oh, it's you. Ma, you okay? Yeah, I'm well, fine. Oh, Ma, I said some terrible things to you, and I'm sorry. I'm responsible for all the decisions I made in my life, and if my life didn't turn out perfectly well, whose has? Marianne Mobley comes to mind. I mean, she gets to sleep with Gary Collins every night. Every night. <laughs> no, what I'm trying to say is we all make the best decisions we can make with what we know. Exactly. Just like it was on the night of your prom. I did what I thought was best. I was wrong. I'm sorry. But you were my first. You didn't come with a book of instructions. Anyway, all I ever wanted was the best for my little girl. Because you deserved it. I didn't want you to settle for less. You still think of me as your little girl? Of course I do. In fact, come on. <laughs> Sit on my lap. For old time's sake. Oh, come on, Maya. You can't be serious. I mean, I'm a grown woman. What's wrong with a mother wanting to hold her child? Dorothy, do this to me. Sit on my lap. <laughs> Well, if you're sure, I... Oh, Ma. Oh, this brings back so many memories. The time I was five... Bad idea, bad idea. Ma, are you all right? Uh, I'm fine. I just panicked for a minute. Come, sit down here. No, oh, Ma. This is just like old times. So tell me, did you have a good time tonight at your prom, Pussycat? Wonderful, Ma. It was everything I wanted it to be. Come. Tell Ma all about it. Well, John bought me this beautiful corsage. And then when we got to the gymnasium, it was so beautiful. Anyway, when we got there, we walked in. about me. Oh, my revenge will be to make John feel as bad as he made me feel. I want him to see me, see my life, so he'll know exactly what he missed. She doesn't know a whole lot about revenge, does she? <laughs> well, I'm ready for John. Oh, I've waited a long time for this night. Dorothy, I'm begging you, don't go out with this guy. He hurt you once, he'll hurt you again. I am not going out with him. But you said you were going to make him suffer. Don't you have to date a man to do that? Not this time. No, I have my plan all worked out step by step. First, he'll comment on how stunning I look, and then I'll say, oh, John, did we have a date tonight? Oh, all grown up. And she remarked that that night would always be the most memorable and important night that the two of us ever shared. Remember, Ma? Vaguely. <laughs> but John never showed up. I've never forgotten it. <laughs> but apparently he has, or he wouldn't have had the nerve to call here. You're not going to call him back, are you? Oh, absolutely. If John comes to Miami, I want to see him. I don't think that's such a good idea, Pussycat. Ma, don't you see? When John Reddy gets here, I'm finally going to get my revenge. He's going to see a beautiful, vibrant woman who's done something with her life. Well, Dorothy, I'd like to help, but... <laughs> I can't go out with him on such short notice. <laughs> I meant done something with her life standing up. Blanche Devereaux's going on a diet. 
you hold off until tomorrow? I got some Sara Lee stock I'd like to unload. <laughs> Wait, can I have those gummy bears? They are good, aren't they? Oh, I don't eat them. Then why do you want them? To play army. <laughs> and sometimes I like to line them up around my bed and pretend I'm Gulliver. <laughs> You know, Blanche, you put yourself through this hell every year. Are you sure it's worth it? Of course it's worth it. On my anniversary, every year since I was married, I have slipped into my wedding dress and had my picture taken. George was always so proud of me for staying svelte. And I'm going to get into that dress this year, even if it kills me. It's not you I'm worried about. The last time you went on a diet, you turned into that guy from Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> you did everything but butter my face. <laughs> it's going to be different this time. See, I'm on this drink-it-off diet. You have two shakes and a sensible meal every day. You lose weight the fast, easy way. I prefer the Italian diet. You drink a bottle of wine, make a smart remark, then get your jaw wired. <laughs> oh, Dorothy, a man called for you while you were out. Finally, now we can break out that bottle of champagne we've been saving. Uh, Come on, Dorothy, we might not get another chance. I'm sure we will. We can just serve it at the wake. <laughs> He says he's in Miami on business and he wants to see you. Uh, John Reddy called. I haven't heard from him in almost 40 years. Oh, I can't believe it. Who's John Reddy? Oh, he's a guy who humiliated me. Could you narrow it down a bit, Dorothy? <laughs> he's the guy who stood me up for my senior prom. Oh, Dorothy, I had no idea you were stood up for your prom. Oh, that's awful. I figured you didn't go, but to be stood up... <laughs> Oh, John Noretti was one of the toughest guys in my high school. He smoked, he drank, he made those rude noises under his armpit. <laughs> I was totally in love with him. Uh, and when he asked me to go to the senior prom, I was thrilled. Oh, when I came down the stairs all dressed, Ma cried because her little girl was all... Blanche Devereaux's going on a diet. <laughs> Could you hold off until tomorrow? I got some Sara Lee stock I'd like to unload. Wait, can I have those gummy bears? They are good, aren't they? Oh, I don't eat them. Then why do you want them? To play army. <laughs> and sometimes I like to line them up around my bed and pretend I'm Gulliver. <laughs> you know, Blanche, you put yourself through this hell every year. Are you sure it's worth it? Of course it's worth it. On my anniversary, every year since I was married, I have slipped into my wedding dress and had my picture taken. George was always so proud of me for staying svelte. And I'm going to get into that dress this year, even if it kills me. It's not you I'm worried about. The last time you went on a diet, you turned into that guy from Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> you did everything but butter my face. <laughs> it's going to be different this time. See, I'm on this drink-it-off diet. You have two shakes and a sensible meal every day. You lose weight the fast, easy way. I prefer the Italian diet. You drink a bottle of wine, make a smart remark, then get your jaw wired. <laughs> Dorothy, a man called for you while you were out. Finally, now we can break out that bottle of champagne we've been saving. Uh, Come on, Dorothy, we might not get another chance. I'm sure we will. We can just serve it at the wake. <laughs> he says he's in Miami on business and he wants to see you. Uh, John Reddy called. I haven't heard from him in almost 40 years. Oh, I can't believe it. Who's John Reddy? Oh. He's a guy who humiliated me. Could you narrow it down a bit, Dorothy? <laughs> He's the guy who stood me up for my senior prom. Oh, Dorothy, I had no idea you were stood up for your prom. Oh, that's awful. I figured you didn't go, but to be stood up. <laughs> oh, John Noretti was one of the toughest guys in my high school. He smoked, he drank, he made those rude noises under his armpit. <laughs> I was totally in love with him. Uh, and when he asked me to go to the senior prom, I was thrilled. Oh, when I came down the stairs all dressed, Ma cried because 